So if you haven't heard, here is what Drew Brees said yesterday that set the world on fire in the world of sports. Everyone is looking back now at Kaepernick's protests from a few years ago, and obviously they were always about police brutality, and now it's coming back to the fore, and a lot of people expect that we will see players kneeling again even when the NFL season starts. I'm curious how you think the NFL will and should respond to that, and of course you're such a leader in the league. Uh, What is your responsibility as a leader uh, in times like this for the rest of your teammates and, and players in the league? I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Um, let me let me just tell you what I see or what I feel when the national anthem is played and when I look at the, the flag of the United States. I envision my two grandfathers who fought for this country during World War II, one in the Army and one in the Marine Corps, both risking their lives to protect our country and to try to make our country and this world a better place. So every time I stand with my hand over my heart, looking at that flag and singing the national anthem, that's what I think about. And in many cases, it brings me to tears, thinking about all that has been sacrificed, not just those in the military, but for that matter, those throughout the civil rights movements of the 60s and everyone and all that has been endured by so many people up until this point. And is everything right with our country right now? No, it's not. We still have a long way to go. But I think what you do by standing there and showing respect to the flag with your hand over your heart is it shows unity. It shows that we are all in this together. We can all do better. And that we are all part of the solution. I think that's almost perfect. I mean, this is what's con- what Drew Brees just said is right now being labeled controversial. He wasn't reading that off a script. He didn't have a teleprompter. He was responding to a question as a part of an interview with Yahoo. I just I I read the quote. I hadn't even heard the audio. I read the quote and I was like there must be more. I felt like uh I, I felt like remember back at the Cosby show when Theo got the uh, the the hundred dollar shirt, and uh, and 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 Claire was like, "There better be a pair of pants in there," and she starts digging through. Like that's what I felt like when I saw this quote was considered controversial. I was like, Where, "Where's the rest of it? Where, where's the controversial part?" I stand up to honor my grandfathers who fought Nazis and help to make the world a safer place and think about their sacrifice and sometimes get emotional with my hand over my heart that is controversial what what in the world have we come to in sports when that's considered a controversial opinion i think that's a hell of an answer on the spot for an athlete who isn't necessarily expecting to be asked a question like that. It's, it's, and, and, and people are like, oh, Drew Brees should retire. It's time for him to go. He donated $5 million to causes in New Orleans. He is a huge reason why the Saints are still in New Orleans, he and his family. Otherwise, they might be in San Antonio. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills that I haven't seen a single person on my timeline standing up for Drew Brees and being like, you know what? I agree with everything Drew Brees said. So, boom, print it. Clay Travis, I agree with everything Drew Brees said. I hope he stands to it. If you disagree with Drew Brees, that's your right but you are trying to find a way to be offended if you are upset by what Drew Brees just said. That's the truth. Um, I just, I I don't find any of this remotely controversial at all. I'll bring in the crew. We'll take your calls, 877-996-6369. Dr. David Chow is going to join us for hour three. Danny G, we played the context, we played the audio, I just added more context, more quotes from Drew Brees. I'm glad that he's not backing down. I don't see anything that he said that's wrong. 
Yeah, I think the word disrespecting is what got a lot of people hot. But you know, we talked about this in hour one. I have always disagreed with you, and we've had nice conversations, even though they got heated three years ago at times. I've never agreed with your take on on you know kneeling. I don't think peaceful kneeling uh, is bad. It doesn't bother me. My grandfather proudly fought as an army sergeant in World War II, so I can appreciate Breeze's stance on that. Although the way he fondly remembers his grandfather's, my my grandfather was drinking at that time and really mean to me <laughs> when I was a little kid uh, because of the things he saw in the war. So maybe that's why I'm not thinking of my grandpa so much during a, a national anthem. But Look, it's okay to listen. It's okay to be able to see both sides of an argument. We started off the week after such a horrible weekend in a a video that bothered us to the core, to where, like me, I'm sure most of America has had problems sleeping this past week. I'm going to be honest with you. Every night I've tried to go to bed this past week, I have so much on my mind. It's been hard to get a good night's sleep, and I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to that. When he comes out and says his truth, I'm, I'm not going to get triggered by that. And I disagree with it being disrespectful, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to his thoughts about it. He's entitled to his opinion. I'm entitled to mine. And if one thing we can get out of all this that's been going on the past couple of weeks is let's stop and listen to what everybody feels and what they think and we can learn from each other, no matter what race you are. Dub, what did you think? I don't find it very controversial at all. He was asked a question, and he answered it honestly, which is all anyone ever wants, especially from professional athletes. That's what we say. We want athletes and coaches to be honest, and then when they're honest, people are like, well, we didn't want them to say that. It's it's amazing how often that happens. So, I mean, I have no problem with, you know, people, if they want to take a knee during the National Anthem, I have no problem if they disagree with that. I mean, to me personally – I think anyone should be able to do whatever they feel is right for them. And Drew Brees just laid out in this interview after he was asked a question what he believes is right for him, and now everyone's mad about it. Eddie, you do updates and have been doing updates since uh, you served with Drew Brees' uh, uh, grandfathers back in World War II. Um, do you sometimes get blown away by the reaction from a news perspective? We played the question, we played the answer. I really don't understand how this is considered remotely controversial. No, if you would have told me at the time, hey, we've got some audio, listen to this and tell me what you think before all this blew up, before the reaction from people, you know, what do you think about this? I, I wouldn't have thought anything about it. And you're in the news you. business. That's what I'm pointing to. Like you would listen, like you're trying to keep your ear tuned to like what's the news story going to be. And the same thing as me, I read it and I, I made the joke about the Cosby show, like back, what was it? The Z's that Cav- Cavarisi shirt. If you remember old school Cosby show, Theo got a hundred dollar shirt and then Denise tried to make it for him. And there's a great scene where, uh, where Claire Huxtable is like digging through the package, like a hundred dollars, there better be a pair of pants in there. I saw the quotes and I was like, what? Like I, I, I was like digging around. I was like, what else was said? Because this isn't to me remotely controversial. And it's actually crazy, uh, day before last, someone tweeted to me, what do you think we'd be talking about right now if sports were going on? And I said, we would be talking about people demonstrating during the national anthem. And and now I'm seeing, to see the reaction to this, uh, I mean, it's, we're all counting the days until sports returns. And, and this is, and I'm not trying to suggest that sports is more important than what's going on in life. I, but I'm just saying my enthusiasm for sports returning now and knowing that what we're going to be talking about uh, I know, I is, sp- is yes. just like, great. Now I'm not even, am I going to be able to even enjoy sports when it comes back? That's exactly what I thought. I was like, we were going to be headed towards a great American reopening and everybody was going to be ecstatic about sports coming back. And and we all agree sports is supposed to be a great uniter. We've talked about yes. this so many times. It, it, you could be of any color, of any uh, ethnicity, you could be of any gender, you could be of any age. And if you're next to me wearing the same jersey as me, I'm high-fiving you. Yeah, or we're right. both booing yes. together. And then we're not even having that now, it seems. Well, so much for this. Drew Brees has now apologized. This is the problem with everything in America. We say we want honest conversations. Somebody gives an honest conversation, honest statement, and then they get criticized, and then they apologize. And this is like a bad cliche. Drew Brees on Instagram, he posted a white hand interlocked with a black hand. And then he said as follows, 
I would, I'm reading. I haven't even read the full statement. I would like to apologize to my friends, teammates, the city of New Orleans, the black community, NFL community, and anyone I hurt with my comments yesterday. In speaking with some of you, it breaks my heart to know the pain I have caused. In an attempt to talk about respect, unity, and solidarity, I'm about the American flag and the national anthem. I made comments that were ins- like he didn't actually do this. That were insensitive and completely missed the mark. This is just, I'm not even going to read the whole, uh, the whole comments. I, I just, this is, look, here is the deal. Say what you believe, and if some people disagree with what you believe in, so what? Everyone agreeing on everything is not real, and it also is not what should happen in a democracy. When you apologize for honest comments that you make that offend people, what you end up doing is leaving no one respecting you. Really, I'm going to be honest with you. I tell you what I think every day. If you disagree, more power to you. You can do whatever you would like to disagree with my comments every single day. But I'm never going to apologize for what I believe. Period. Not to anyone. And the minute that you do apologize, you actually lead to more of this argument of there's only one right opinion, which is what scares me about the country these days. What happens is People are focused on the need for conversation and what they mean is everybody needs to have the same opinion. Unanimity of opinion scares me far more than conflict of opinion. Unanimity of opinion is how we end up with totalitarianism. The two, I said this in hour one, the two dumbest decisions that I believe have been made by our government in the 21st century were bipartisan decisions. Those two things, shutting down the country, which is continuing, is I think the dumbest decision that has been made by the United States government in my life. You can maybe argue we should have shut down for a couple of weeks for the coronavirus. Everything since then, I believe, is idiocy. There's no reason that California should be shut down still. There's no reason, if you look at the data, that Michigan or Pennsylvania or, uh, or Minnesota or Illinois, no reason any of those states should be shut down. You can go to the casino in Vegas. You can go to the amusement park in Florida. Florida and Vegas have got it right. This virus is not a threat to most young, healthy people. The second dumbest decision was going to war in Iraq. We wasted trillions of dollars tens of thousands of lives by making the wrong decisions in both cases, and that was bipartisan, and we shouted down anyone who disagreed. If you oppose the war in Iraq, and I did, I was just a kid back then, I was a law student, and I opposed, you talk to anybody I went to law school with, we debated all this stuff, I opposed the war in Iraq. If you opposed the war in Iraq, people said you hated, you weren't a patriot, you hated America. That was the argument against you. It's how Bill Maher ended up losing his television show. And similarly, if you opposed the lockdown, people were like, oh, you don't care about grandmas dying. Oh, you want everybody to die. No. I want us to be rational and reasonable looking at all the facts and making calculated decisions. In neither of those situations did it ever make sense. 